bit here. So we're emulating what works, what's successful. I made a third-party patches folder here, just at a random. It could be anywhere as long as it's somewhere relative to your contact native instruments folder, wherever it is. You, and um, so I'm putting my third-party stuff. That's all this is. It's third-party stuff, and it was free. Um, you can't beat that. You can't argue against free and decent, actually, as well. <clears throat> Now, within that, you make a folder. This folder will represent this right here, this folder. All right? Don't get too ahead about the picture and stuff. That'll come next or soon. <clears throat> then you make an instruments folder. And then you make a samples folder. All right? Why? Because that's what works. That's how a contact library works. Like I said, if we go here, what do we got? We got documentation, we got an instruments folder, and a samples folder. And the rest of the stuff can go there. Yada, yada. So we just want to emulate what's successful, what's working. So probably the most complex one for me was the VTS buzz. So I'm just going to show you this really quick. You got, so what you do is you make the instruments folder, and you make the samples folder, and then you make an additional folder. This is kind of like a nesting doll, like a Russian doll uh, effect here. Um, and then, just for visual aid, the nesting doll thing. So this folder here that just says plain and simple VST buzz, that represents this folder right here, this thing. And then when I click here on instruments, what you see there is basically representation of what you see when I go here on instruments right there. So that's what we're doing today. So I did that ahead. Now what I found that was easy was once I made this folder, I didn't bother putting the word mini collection, but so what I did was I copied and pasted Command C inside my instruments folder, and then I did it inside my samples folder. Then after that, within these folders, I deleted all the samples. And that might sound kind of counter counterintuitive, but counterintuitive, but it makes sense in its own way. So this is what it looked like originally in the folder. And then I deleted all samples. And then you just do that across the board. And there were some in here that were just plain simple s samples. They didn't include an NKI folder file. Sorry. So I didn't include those here. There's no point. And um, then you go to samples and you do the then you do the complete opposite. Then you delete all the NKI folders. You do that. Be a good Boy Scout and wait it out. Because like I said, you're doing it yourself. Because <clears throat> you didn't go ahead and buy a $100 fancy smancy library from some company. Um, do what you got to do. But once you wait it all out, do that. What are we missing next? Well, we're missing the wallpaper. Sometimes they might provide you with one. You know, they being whoever it is that you got this for free from. If not, you know, try to go on the website and then make like a screenshot or maybe load up the instrument, see if they have something here like I did with the Jupiter 8. I just went over here and made a click then drag this image here, took a screenshot of it, and then that's what you got there. I didn't really care to make a second attempt to make it perfect, but, you know, whatever. It's sticks out enough to make it different. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this. Copy, paste, and then paste it. But one thing that does seem to be consistent of a successful uh, execution of library 
nesting in the uh, contact player is the uh, calling this wallpaper. It seems like it's quite vital for it to work. Why? That's a mystery to me. Like, why does it have to be called wallpaper? It's just the way it is. And then I, you know, after a while, we just kind of stop <clears throat> biting against the current. Just roll with it. Next thing, um, this part can get tricky because as you go up, <clears throat> as you go up in uh, creating more and more and more of these libraries, um, this can get a little tricky, but this is what you want to do. I'm trying to remember what the last one I made was. And then I'm going to copy and paste the last successful uh, NICNT file. Once upon a time, I came across an NICNT file. Oh, that's right. I got one from here. All right. So copy and paste that. I'm getting it from the Pennington house. And then I'm going to paste it here. Oh, not there. Stupid video latency. <clears throat> All right. So now this says Pennington house. We're going to change that right now. We want to keep the uh, NIC, the dot NICNT. We're just going to call this what we want it to look like. Whatever it is you want to call it. You can absolutely rename it, whatever. Then you want to open this with text edit. And then this part takes a little bit of some hacker-like. I know this may seem a bit uh, dawning. But it's not so bad. I got used to it. I used to think it was very uh, very intimidating, I guess you could say. So I'm going to copy and paste this just for consistency. What I named it there. And then where it says up here, where it says name Peddington House, I'm going to absolutely delete that. And then paste that there with no spaces between the first letter and the mark there and the mark there. And then same here where it says reg key. Paste, paste it there. Now here's the tricky part that might take like a, a revisit on this. This is the only real hacker-like uh, thing. Um, based on that video, which I, like I said, I take no credit for, <clears throat> um, perhaps I might find it one day and post it in the link. Um, but uh, it was an older gentleman, and he said there was some sort of number range. He says starting from like 500 and like maybe seven, nine hundred, whatever it was, um, you can choose a different number. So I'm going in the order. So this is like the maybe like the um, sixth, seventh one I've made. So wherever you get this NIC, NICT, NT, whatever it is, folder, uh, file from, whatever number it shows up here. So in my instance, it's 514, and I changed it one number up to 515. It's the SNPID number. I have no idea what that really is, and I don't care but it gets me what I want. I'm going to click away. And I'm going to save it. Command S. Yeah. It's up to you if there's something that was originally in the folder, like, uh, you know, what's it going to kill me? 180, 184 kilobytes. It's not going to kill me. I'll put it here. I'll keep that. Just so you guys can be like, well, what was, what was the document folder for? <clears throat> And then the cover, whatever, maybe I'll keep these also. So now that's all done, right? So then when you open up your contact, I'm just going to start fresh contact just for safe measures. <clears throat> start a fresh contact. And if we're successful, great. If not, you know, hey guys, back here, I'm um, experiencing a lot of 
issues with the audio routing and things like that. Uh, so my computer freaked out and I had to restart. So here we are uh, back. Uh, let me go to add library. We scroll through where we kept that folder where we made the nesting folders of all the instruments and you should be able to hit choose and then enter your password. I have a really long password. Technical, technically rough day with technical stuff. There we go. And there you have it. If you're happy with the picture, you know, I'm not an expert on this. I just know enough to get me by, but um, you may want to research <clears throat> the proper dimensions and sizing and, and all that stuff if you really are, you know, kind of picky about how it looks here. But I can see, like, that there's wood flooring and stuff, and that was the original image. And one thing I can say is the smaller, the better the image. So if you can shrink this. But, like, for me, I'm not that picky about it. You can maybe just make a screenshot of just one thing. I may revisit that later. But like I said, it's not ultimately a make or break th for me. A good result of this would be if you can go here, see these, click one, and then for some reason, contact within the MPC software makes it that weird closeout thing. And then there it is. And I am getting the Airy keys from the Korg Poly 61M. <clears throat> and the audio is going through. I'm, not, I'm having real difficult time with the, the um, audio routing with Soundflower. Soundflower is being real, real pain in the butt. What I want to do is I want to go to Browse for Folder. Let's see if this takes care of my problem. Yeah. And so I was just having a problem with contact finding where the files go. Now, this may just be the version of contact I have, but for some reason... I often get, hey, look for the samples, these WAV files, and for some reason it just doesn't know. Do it that one time and then it takes care of itself kind of thing. That's nice. That's pretty nice. I like that. I feel like this is the one I've had the most issue with. Um, you gotta kind of find the right touch with the imaging or maybe just research what dimensions you need and how to line it up perfectly so it doesn't cut out or it lines up perfectly. But as I mentioned, it's not a make or break for me. I feel the reason for me having a hard time with this is because the files that they provided are just so identical in naming. There's nothing that really sticks out. So if you come across that <clears throat> with the files you got, and I'll just show you another example. Like you see how these have numbers. They all have different numbers different like they were the person who sampled you know like I, I mentioned before god bless that person's heart because uh because of them i have free stuff and who can complain about free stuff i mentioned before i don't know if it's my version or maybe this system isn't perfect in the past when i wanted to load up something that i get this quite often 
and then I would usually just have keep open and resolve automatically. But like I discovered those these files are just named like keys. C1, C2, E3, whatever. They're all identical to the other nested files. So I would just, in this case, do it manually to the samples because it's looking for the samples and you can tell, you can tell what it's looking for by here where it says dot wave that tells you it's a wave file it's not an nk i whatever you want to call it <clears throat> so i'll just do it manually <clears throat> but this is one of the le one of the lesser sophisticated of the bunch that i've used um but it was free and if you have the patience to make it work for you who can complain about free and to my disposal at my choosing and I don't have to go through okay which file was it which folder was it I mean I know you can make shortcuts and stuff but look at that that's that looks like crap to me this looks awesome and I don't have to jump back here and do that kind of stuff. I say it's worth it. I say it's worth doing this method so that you can compete with all the, you know, fancy, smancy developers out there. You can just find stuff that's free. You know, some are more sophisticated and, and thoroughly provided for you. You know, some take some take you know some finagling, some extra work, some headache, but when it's all said and done, you have all this at your disposal, and I think that wraps it up. I mean, why complain about free? I sure, I sure am enjoying this stuff that I got for free. That's it. I hope this helps and uh, um, thank you.